Okay, so I might have went a little overboard here. I uh, bought some audio stuff for the, uh, the mini jet boat. And the idea here is to have it all fully easily removable. So, so should be uh, should be pretty slick once it's all said and done. But got a uh, five channel MOSFET, 2000 watt amp, which that's 2000 watt peak. It's not gonna do that RMS, but um, nice IP, uh, IP67 rated marine sundown. Or what is this? Soundstream, actually. Use a camera for a uh, pushing apparatus. Uh, yep. So that's the size of my hand. And I got hands straight from Baby Gap. So it's pretty small. Nice five channel woofer. And then uh, I got eight inch compression horn marine speakers. Easily do this. So yeah, this is com <laughs> this is complete overkill. But who doesn't like loud tunes? All right, yeah. So I have four of these eight-inch uh, compression horns. They're coaxial, uh, standard cone speakers on the outside. Eight-inch of those. And then on the inside, it is a one inch titanium compression horn driver with a uh, a little bit of a horn here. So they're very directional speakers in this uh, in this cone right here, but it's uh, it's very loud. So uh, yep. All right. Well, I will get all this set up and uh, try and see how I'm gonna get it to fit in the boat and uh, go from there. All right, so I have everything connected. The uh, 35 amp hour deep cycle connected to the Songstream 2000 watt amp, five channels. I uh, got the trailer wire going to the four individual speakers right there. Got the uh, 12 inch dual voice coil uh, bridged onto two ohms right there. And uh, everything's configured. I've uh, set the gains, set the high pass filters and the low pass filters and all that good stuff. So uh, I am going to bump it at like three quarter percent just because these compression horns are um, a little bit loud. So uh, I'll bump this and then come in from the garage and you can hear it. Should do the trick. All right, now I just gotta go get uh, these uh, these rough sail panels cut out at Zach's machine shop so that the speaker can fit in it and we'll call it a day. All right, so I made this in Autodesk Fusion 360. 
It's basically where the speaker is going to mount into for the side of the boat. So right where you sit. So here's the circle, 7.063 inches for the uh, for the mounting surface. And then we're going to bend this at a 90 degree here at this right side. And uh, yeah, this took me way too long to build. This was like two and a half hours just to make this rectangle with a circle in it. This, uh, this software is way more complicated than it needs to be. But uh, yeah, all right, I'm gonna send this to Zach and go over there tomorrow. So next video will be of us cutting the, me the metal out or the sail panels out. Jet boat mic. Jet boat mic. Extra tabs used out of the excess. Pretty sweet. All right, so that's what the finished product's gonna look like. So that bend goes to the bulkhead back there and little holes drilled so that we can put bolts in it. And then this goes along the gunnel. And uh, yeah, it should look pretty nice very happy with the way this turned out so and uh yeah looks good this is to account uh, for the uh the fill neck right here so everything looks real decent okay those uh sail panels turned out really nice they're all installed the button head bolts looks pretty good nice and clean as you can see, the uh, the little relief there for the for the um, what am I trying to say? Filler neck for the gas tank, right there. And uh, underneath there, we got that welded in. So uh, yeah, looking good. On to installing the radio. So my hole saw kit only did up to a two and a half inch. So I'm just going to use my router my Ryobi router just to route the inside of this. So this is gonna make an amazingly gigantic mess, but uh, hopefully I don't rip one of my fingers off doing this, but all right, I'll do this now. So this is all cleaned up now and I got the head unit mounted, got it secured, looks pretty good. So if I turn on the accessory panel right here and then I turn on the head unit switch like that and uh, turn on the head unit, voila, we have, uh, we have source control, Bluetooth, all the good stuff. So alrighty, here's an explanation to how the subwoofer and amp are going to mount. So this was just a, uh, like a fuel tank that you buy off of eBay. And uh, you can see the AN fittings on the bottom of it. 
I just welded a plate to the back of this to allow for my amplifier to mount to it. And then I uh, had Zach cut an eight inch hole out of some quarter inch aluminum. And then uh, the subwoofer will get mounted there. Then obviously we're gonna have to layer a bunch of uh, butylene mat on the inside of this thing so it doesn't resonate because this is a chunky little unit and uh, might make this thing vibrate. So, all right, I'm gonna finish drilling and tapping this, getting the amp mounted and then get that little, little shebang mounted right here. So, all right, get that done. All right, so I have this amplifier mounted to the backside of the subwoofer box. So the whole point of all of this is so that I can easily disconnect all of this if I need to save weight for a trip or to increase storage space when I'm not going out just to party or whatever. So the way this is set up now is the amplifier is on the backside and it will essentially like so. So now what I have to do is figure out the mounting point on the stringer that allows for the wife that allows for the support right here to uh, basically keep this elevated. So it's looking pretty good and the amp is on the back side here so even though it's IPX 67 rated it's uh you know, fairly watertight. I still want to reduce the amount of water that's ex exposed to it. And the subwoofer will go right there. So, not half bad. Turned out pretty nice. Now I just got to get that plate welded in and then get the mount welded on and then uh, finish this up, get the sub in, finish the wiring and got some tunes. All right, so this is the uh, end result that I was looking for. This would end up going down to here. I'm gonna tack this in place to where this, we can drill holes and tap, and then this bracket goes straight down into this, and the whole system is, you know, very secure. So this is just lightly tacked in place here, and uh, these will get bolted, so turned out really good. All right, so now I just gotta install the amp back on here, finish welding that up, and then uh, install the subwoofer and wire it up.
I didn't think about this while using a metal ratchet that this uh, this 90 ounce strontium subwoofer driver would be sucking my uh, my ratchet to the side of the speaker instead of allowing me to actually ratchet these things down. This is uh, way more difficult than it should be. Goodness. Okay, it is uh it's now complete. Got the soda box mounted, the amp, all the wire management's done for the most part. It's uh nice and sealed, it's uh easily removable, that's the main thing. Uh radio right there, uh eight inch, uh eight inch speaker, and then two underneath, and then another one right here. So it's plenty loud. So I have the volume at three quarter of the way up right now at uh volume 15 and uh, I'm gonna walk to the other side of the garage play it and uh, give a quick example of what it sounds like obviously I can't be in the same area enclosed area with it at full volume because it's just too much but uh, yeah <laughs> Yep. All right. That's the end of this.